Hello everyone and welcome back to Matt Vlogs. Very back to the vlog for you today. If you're wondering where I was last week, I was away uh, having some training and um, theological training that is for the course I'm on, the apprenticeship that I'm on. And that is why I was last week, why there wasn't a vlog because I got back late on the Friday and then didn't have time to produce a vlog for you last week. So that's why there wasn't one and obviously the Easter holiday as well. But I'm back now and um, great to be back um, doing these vlogs for you, hoping and praying you be blessed and encouraged the things that we look at together on this channel. In particular, if you're new to the channel, warm welcome to you. Please don't like, click the like button and subscribe and turn the notification bell so whenever a video is posted every week you'll be notified and be able to keep up to date with any new content as and when it comes out in the following weeks. I do usually try to upload my videos between uh, Thursdays and Fridays and sometimes Saturdays depending on how my week unfolds in terms of busyness and what I've got to do during that particular week, well, however uh, much time I have free time to be able to uh, produce the vlogs and then upload them really does differ from week to week. So do uh, subscribe so then you'll be notified when those videos do come live for you to watch at your own leisure and convenience for you. Also, if you have any comments or questions raised about anything I've talked about or talk about on the, on the video, feel free to drop them in the comment section of the video below. Or you also reach out to me on my social channels, so I'll just put it in the description of the video as well. So if you have any particular questions, you want to be private and personal, questions you want to ask me about things, then you're more than welcome to use those channels that are open and available for you to use if you wish to do so. So we're continuing our series back in Esther, and we're picking up the series back in chapter 9. We're picking up the reading of verses 18 down to 32. But the Jews who were at Susa assembled together on the 13th day, as well as on the 14th and on the 15th of the month, they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore the Jews of the un un villages who dwelt in the unwalled towns celebrated the 14th day of the month of Adar with gladness and feasting, as a holiday and for sending presents to one another. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters to all the Jews, near and far, who were in all the provinces of King Asuerus, to establish among them that they should celebrate yearly the fourteenth and fifteenth day of the month of Adar, as the days in which the Jews had rest from their enemies, as their month which was turned from sorrow to joy for them, and from mourning to a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, and sending presents to one another and gifts to the poor. So the Jews accepted the custom which had begun as Mordecai had written to them, because Haman the son of Hamatha, the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to annihilate them, and had cast Pur, that is, the lot, to consume them and destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letter that this wicked plot which Haman had devised against the Jews should return his own head, and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows. So they called these days Purim, after the name Pur, therefore, because of the words of this letter, what they had seen concerning this matter and what had happened to them, the Jews established and imposed it upon themselves that their descendants and all who had joined them, that without fail they would celebrate these two days every year according to the written instruction and according to the prescribed time, that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation and every family, every province and every city, that these days of Purim should not fail, but be observed among the Jews, that the memory of them should not perish among their descendants. Then Queen Esther, the daughter of Abigail, with Mordecai the Jew, wrote with full authority to confirm the second letter about Purim. And Mordecai sent letters to all the Jews, to 127 provinces of the king, kingdom of Asuerus, with words of peace and truth, to confirm these days of Purim, and the appointed time, as Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther had prescribed for them, and as they decreed for themselves and their descendants concerning matters of their feasting, fasting and lamenting. So the decree of Esther confirmed these matters before Purim and was written in the book. We've recently come out of Easter, haven't we? One of those pivotal moments that we set every year, or Christians set every year, to celebrate and also Jews take part in the Passover, where they reflect on the rescue that, that was 
secured for them by Moses and they often remember that and there are many festivals that are celebrated every year and this one that we read of in Esther is also one of those festivals where they remember how God delivered them from the evil plot of Haman to destroy the Jews to annihilate them and how instead of that he had been destroyed he had been hanged on his own gallows and now they were free they could rejoice and they were instructed to remember these two days to celebrate what they'd been saved from, what they were facing was total annihilation. Yet by the providence of God, providing Esther and Mordecai stood in the gap between them and saved them from a total destruction. So they were instructed to celebrate. We don't celebrate that, but we can see in the Bible that it reminds us that there are many things we can be celebrating, many things we can rejoice in. As people, we can reflect on what we've been saved from. But what do I mean by that? What I mean is that God, in his providence, has also provided another means of salvation in which we can celebrate where we were facing annihilation for our own sin, for the judgment that we deserve, for the things we have said, we have done, the ways which, which we have displeased God in our rebellion against him and not wanting him to rule over us. We were standing in place of destruction for our sinfulness before him, before a holy God who has pure eyes to look upon evil. He cannot even tolerate it for a little second. Anything to him is, any sin to him is as black as possible and he cannot endure it. He cannot just sweep it under the carpet and, and pretend it doesn't exist because it did. And we see how much sin um, hate, he hates sin by the destruction, by the giving up of his own dear son, Jesus Christ, as we reflected on a few weeks ago, remembering Easter. And what that means is that, that he was the sacrifice. He was the one who stood between us and God so that we can now have celebration. We can celebrate freedom in him, not in ourselves. We can't secure that in ourselves, but only in and through Jesus Christ's finished work on the cross. Only then can we receive of the joy that these people entered into because they realised what they've been saved from. And that's what we as Christians realise when we come to faith in God, we realise what we've been saved from. We realise our own sinful hearts and how wicked they are. Even as Christians, we see every day how prone we are to wander away from the God we love. We are so prone to sinful behaviour. Even as Christians, we get it wrong. We, me we mess up. And that doesn't mean because you become a Christian, become perfect overnight. You don't. You, there's a process to go through. With, uh, the Bible calls it sanctification. It's a process in which we become more holy. We become more like Jesus day by day as we read more of his word, as we pray, as we spend more time with him. We become more like him. It's like in any relationship that we have. When you spend time with that person in which you love, you will begin to reflect them. You begin to become more like them because you're spending so much time with them. And that's what happens throughout the history of Christianity. Those who have, have had a wonderful Christian life have been those who have been clear, closest to God. And this is what we call walking with God. And many characters in the Bible did just that. Enoch, one of the famous characters for this, walked with God for many years. And then God just took him away. He didn't die. He was taken out of this world. And that's an amazing thing to walk with God. And that's something he wants all of his people to do, to walk with him, to talk with him, to share your worries, to share your concerns with him. He's uh, your father in heaven. He cares about you more than you can possibly imagine. So you can offload all those pent up worries and stresses and concerns that you have about family members, about your job, about money, about the cost of living crisis that's going up all the time. All these things that concern you, you can take them to him in prayer because he loves you. He cares for you. He doesn't want you to carry these burdens by yourself. He is there for you to give your burdens to him. Cast your burdens, cares upon him, for he cares for you, Peter reminds us in one of his letters. And that's what you can do today. As these people did, they celebrated, they remembered what uh, God had done and how he had rescued them through Esther and Mordecai. And they were instructed to remember it, to restrict it, to celebrate and to give feasts, to feast and celebrate and to share gifts with one another. And that's what you could be a part of. Not a feast of Purim, as wonderful as that feast was and is for the Jews as they reflect on what they've been saved from. We can remember what we've been saved from, our own total destruction before a holy God who must judge sin. Either he judges it in you 
in eternity, forever, unending, punished for your sinfulness, punished for your rebellion against him, not just um, for a couple of years, but for eternity, separate from God, facing the judgment for your sin. Or in Jesus, he judges it. He judges all of that sin, all of your wrongs, all of those things you thought, all of those things you said and done. Even today, those things can be given over to him. And he pays the price for that. He pays it all in full. That you don't have to worry about paying anything else. You don't have to worry about say a 50 50 so god jesus pays half and you pay the other half no he paid it all all of it was paid by him on the cross so you don't need to add anything it's all finished that's what he said on the cross it is finished there's nothing more to be added to the cross nothing more to be gained from the cross it's complete it is final our salvation is secure in the cross not just that but in his resurrection three days later confirming that god had justified him that god was happy with what he had done he raised him from the dead and we have hope of eternal life because he lives we shall live also but will you be living with him or will you be living on your own um in fear in torment paying the price for all those sins that you don't need to pay for when christ can pay for them when you can give them over to him and he takes it he pays for it in his own body on the tree died in our place condemned he stood so you might have life taste of life in him in his name and you will have reasons to celebrate not just one one or two days a year but every day you can celebrate being a christian that's what it is belonging to god it's a wonderful relationship you can enjoy every single day of your life yes there'll be days when you get it wrong yes there'll be days where you wander away from him as we all do all of us christians have those days where we get it wrong but he receives us not because we're good or or we've got it together but because of christ because of his finished work on the cross because he died for you to give up his life for you to pay the price for all of your sin not that some of them all of them can be washed away in his blood as he cleanses you from all sin every stain every spot and you're washed whiter than snow you're clean like when you step into a shower and you've had a good shower you step off and you feel re-energized and refreshed that's what jesus does he washes you clean all of that filth all of that dirt as you have a shower and you clean yourself off that's exactly what jesus does but in yourself in your spirit he washes you from the inside out making you a totally new person a new life a new person, new being, you become a new person in him, in Christ. You are free. You don't have to worry about what the future holds because you are secure in what he has done. So take hold of that today. Celebrate. Yes, think on that celebration that the Jews had as they remembered how, how God had rescued them. But you can, by putting your hope and trust in Jesus today, you can celebrate every single day of your life knowing what Jesus has done for you and how he has saved you from eternal damnation by trusting in him putting your faith and hope in jesus today and he will receive you he won't cast you aside when you come in true repentance and faith to him he will receive you as the holy spirit does its work as he shows you the filth of your sin shows you how sinful you are and how you need a savior then you see jesus your wonderful savior who gave of himself willingly to die in your place to give you a hope and a future Something that can never be done by yourself that he did for you. And he gives it to you as a gift. Take hold of it today and find freedom in him. Not just today, but for all eternity. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Hope this helped and encouraged you what we've looked at today. If there's any comments or questions you want to raise about anything I've talked about today, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Or also feel free to reach out to me on my social channels as well. And they will be in the description of the video if you wish to do that as well. So that's it. Hope you're having a great weekend. And I will see you next week. And until then, goodbye.